Multi-threaded apps always promise increased performance. After all, if you can take the work done by one core and spread it across 2, 3, or 16 cores, you should see frame rates multiply, right? But that's not what we see in practice, and it can vary from one system to the next. But if you're looking for better performance from software, chances are it's because you're not running the latest and most expensive hardware. So how much can multi-threading a game do for an old computer? We'll answer that question in this video. Recently, DCS from Eagle Dynamics received an update that split up the main thread of the game into two separate threads. But they went a little further and provided two separate executables. One has graphics and gaming logic split into separate threads, and another has that all bundled into one. So we have a golden opportunity to test the effect of multi-threading without throwing other factors in the way. And that's exactly what I did using an old computer. In this case, it was one I built six years ago and later updated with a newer video card. None of the components are newer than five years old, so this is by no means a high-end computer. Let's take a look at how the test was set up. The test machine used the following specs. For the actual testing, I took a selection of aircraft modules in DCS and ran them through two scenarios. Now the reason I did this with different modules is because each one has its own separate package of code. As you're going to see, each one has a different impact on frame rates based on how complex the code package is. Each module was then put through a solo free flight mission with nothing other than the test aircraft. This will mostly just test graphic performance. The second test was a heavily scripted mission with dynamically spawned friendly and enemy forces. Additionally, there was a scripted JSTARS aircraft that regularly scanned the battlefield. So this should put an additional load on the logic thread, and we should see a benefit in the split thread executable here. Before we jump into the results, I want to highlight something you'll see in a lot of older gaming computers, and even some newer ones. While the game is running, the CPU will be processing large amounts of data, and then sending off graphical tasks to the GPU. But if the CPU is overwhelmed with work, you'll see the GPU idling a lot while it waits for something to do. Conversely, an overworked GPU will cause the CPU to slow down while it waits on the GPU to get done with the previous job. Splitting up work among CPU cores can help in a case where a single core is overworked, but if it's the GPU that's maxed out, then you might not see much improvement from multi-threading. We're going to see this bottleneck behavior in action during our tests, so let's start the test for the combined thread to get a good baseline. I wanted to start with the F5 since this is a module that tends to run at a higher frame rate than the others. And we can already see that we get frame rates in the mid 80s, even with a lot of volumetric clouds. Now I want to point out the GPU usage. It's pretty much maxed out here, which means the CPU is waiting on it before it sends more data to process. This means it's the bottleneck on our performance here. But even with this bottleneck, we're still doing really well with frame rates in the 80s. Now I wanted you guys to see the F5 first, so you can see how much of a difference switching modules makes. And that's because our next one takes a little more power to run. The F14 is a fantastic module, but if your computer is struggling with other modules, it's going to get worse with this one. Our frame rate has dropped to the mid-60s flying the exact same map, so keep that in mind. Also notice that CPU1 is the only core going above 50%. That's going to change later on. Lastly, we have the F16, which is a good, solid module. And what I saw here was an average of 80 FPS in this test, so it's a little less than our F5. Now let's take a look at a more CPU heavy scenario. This is our scripted mission that dynamically spawns units to create a new scenario each playthrough. This includes platoons of armor for red, civilian refugee convoys, and friendly forces that need your help. There's also a scripted JSTARS plane that scans the area regularly and uses up some CPU time. In the test, I saw a drop in frame rates across the board. The F5 went down a few frames, the F14 was under 60, and the F16 went down to about 80. So here's how that looks for the executable with the combined thread. It makes sense. As CPU load goes up, frame rate goes down. Now let's see how much we improve those numbers when we try the version where graphics and logic are run on separate threads. When I ran through solo flights on the new multi-thread version, it was like what you would expect. Frame rates went up across the board. But things got a little weird once I did the tests in the dynamic mission. With the F5, I actually saw slightly higher frame rates than I did in the solo flight. The F14's results were the real surprise. CPU usage is spread across several cores, 
but it's the frame rates that show us something interesting. They were within the margin of error of being exactly the same as before. Because of this, I repeated the test a few times just to make sure it wasn't an anomaly. But they all turned out to be about the same. Some were a couple of FPS faster, but some were also slower. I don't have an explanation for this since I don't have access to the code. But of the three, this is the one that consistently runs slower, so it's probably because of its more complex code. That means that there's less room for growth using multi-threading here. So, what can we learn from these results? Performance varies between modules. We saw the greatest gains in multi-threaded performance from the Viper, but the F5 was overall the fastest. And some, like the F14, are going to give a bigger performance hit than others. In our tests, we saw right away that the GPU is the bottleneck. But even with the CPU waiting on the GPU, we still saw some significant gains in performance. Besides hardware bottlenecks, we also saw that software has bottlenecks too. With a code-heavy module like the F14 and a code-heavy mission like our test, we saw that even multi-threading had its limits. So it's another factor to keep in mind. Even with these limitations, we saw that this old PC was still capable of seeing significant gains. So overall, I'd say that multi-threading can be useful even if your computer is starting to show its age. If you have any interesting stories to share about your own experience here, let me know in the comments. And thanks for watching. If you're interested in learning more about how multi-threading works, you should check out this video.